Hey folks, welcome, welcome back. It feels like so long since I've recorded a video. My last few videos were actually all pre-recorded ones because I went to visit some family, which was really nice. It was really nice to go see them after not seeing them for so long. But anyway, yes, my last few videos were pre-recorded. So I think it's been about two weeks since I've recorded a video. Uh, so I should probably put a little disclaimer in here. I apologize in advance if this is a hot mess because yeah, I'm just getting back into the swing of things. So sorry in advance guys. This, if you don't know, is episode three of my Ribbity Save series. If you haven't checked out the other two, then it'd be cool if you did, but I mean, no pressure. If you don't want to, then I guess don't. <laughs> but just a recap for you. My save file is highly inspired by The Sims 2. That was my favourite of the franchise. I absolutely loved The Sims 2. I loved the families, I loved the stories, everything. I absolutely loved it. And I miss it. I miss the depth. So I'm going to try and do my best to recreate the families and their stories and the, the houses that they live in as, as much as I can. So while it will be inspired by them and it'll be including the elements of The Sims 2, I'll, I think I'll still give myself a bit of creative freedom to kind of bring the two worlds of The Sims 2 and The Sims 4 together. So while, yeah, I'll be kind of replicating the builds that the families came in, I'll also be altering them for The Sims 4 slightly. So they won't be like a mirror like, image just in case you expect them to be the exact same. They will be, you'll be able to tell it's them. They just won't be straight up identical. Anyway, I'm gonna stop blabbering. <laughs> I'll also be completely rebuilding all the worlds and creating my own Sims and families um, that will also have their own homes. So again, I'll be trying to merge all these together. Don't worry, all these new families will have their own backstories and relationships that are already set up things like that so when you load it up they'll already have a lot of history because I don't want it to be like it's the Sims 2 families versus my new ones like I'm going to like intersect them like connect the stories will be intertwined is what I mean <laughs> got there eventually and Willow Creek will also be a completely base game now we haven't decided on the other worlds but I did decide Willow Creek's going to be completely base game so if you only have base game that's great at least there's one world and a bunch of families that you can play but as we get closer to finishing Willow Creek, I'll start asking you guys what you want to see with the other worlds. I'll probably put some polls out and stuff on Twitter and I'll also ask you guys here on YouTube. So make sure like, if you have any ideas, just let me know because I'm so open to hearing what you guys want to see in the save file. But I will be discussing that further down the line, so don't worry about that. Now, last episode we finished with the first neighbourhood and today we are moving on to the next one. So I was really torn with what style to go with here and I actually decided to go for a modern development. I did think about doing a more traditional one but I decided nah I want to mix it up, I want to do more modern. And I've done this like, I don't know if you all know what I mean but when you go into a house and estate all the houses are made of the same materials and they all, you can clearly see they're from the same like, almost like catalogue of homes but you usually have a few different models. So there's a few that are slightly different. That's what I'm going for here. So there's going to be like a bungalow and a few different two-story houses, but they're all going to be just a slightly different shape or a slightly different layout, but they'll still be made from all the same materials and have the same like kitchens and stuff like that in them. Now I say it's a modern development. I'm going with like they were made maybe like five years ago, but yeah, it's still pretty modern, you know? Don't forget, if you do enjoy this video, please remember to give it a like because that just helps me know that you're enjoying the series. And if you're not already subscribed, if you want to see more of my videos, just make sure you're subscribed and click the little bell icon so that you can know when I upload. But let's actually get into the video, shall we? So this is the first house that you see being built. This is where the James family live. Now, I won't be showing you the cast part. Instead, the family will be in some screenshots at the end of each speed build. I tried to get them to do some cute family portrait poses. Like, I've only just started experimenting with the poses and I tried to get some portrait ones for the families. Jeez, that's so difficult. Like, I don't know how you get it to work. I've got the individual ones, I can do all them fine. And I've got the bit where you put the statues down and you teleport the Sims onto the statues. And then you like click and get them to the pose. But I just can't get them to line up right. So like the mum's like holding the toddler, but the toddler's like way out of her arms. And oh, even when I try and put the statues like basically on top of each other, it just doesn't work. Like, how do you do it? <laughs> like props to you, the people that can do it. But 
I don't know. So I got really frustrated and I ended up giving up. But I'll just mess around with it my own time and hopefully, maybe, in the next video I'll, I'll have it together and <laughs> you'll see some good family portraits. I don't know, but don't keep your hopes up. Nah, no, actually, you know what? No, I'm gonna set a higher standard for myself. Do keep your hopes up. I will manage. <laughs> I don't even know where I was going with that. Oh, yeah, so there won't be a cast part in this video. Instead, I'll tell you about them and you'll see them in some screenshots. But I was thinking once I've completed Willow Creek, I might do a kind of tour of the town, like where we go in to have a little, like a more in-depth look at The Sims and maybe their relationships and kind of the, the history that I've given them or the history that they already had from The Sims 2, you know, whatever it is. And just have a little bit more of a focus on The Sims because right now, while I'm telling you about The Sims in these videos, you know, it's you're mainly seeing the build, you're not getting to see The Sims that much. So I thought we're just going and have a little explore around. So let me know if that's something you'd be interested in. Let me know in the comments. But basically, this family is made up of Adam James, who's the father. He's in the political career. He's cheerful, family oriented, and ambitious. And yeah, he is a very driven person. He wants to succeed and provide for his family. And he also wants to be able to be there for very important moments of his family, but he's not afraid to spend a lot of hours working away because he knows that it's benefiting them. And he very much loves his wife, Lucy, who is a stay-at-home mum. She is neat, cheerful, and family oriented. And I forgot to say, actually, before going into depth of these sims, this family I decided to create was like the stereotypical perfect suburban family. Everything in their life is just magical, everything works out. But under the surface, each of them have their own reasons that they're starting to get a little bit bored or a little bit fed up with their life. But at the same time, they know they've got a really good life, so they just kind of keep ignoring it. You know, they need a little bit of something that spices up their life, maybe. But yes, their daughter, Claire, She's a social butterfly, she is a genius, she's doing fabulous at school, she has lots of friends, she's very popular and she's a very um, well brought up child. She's, she's lovely. And Dean the little toddler, now I've given him the clingy trait I feel like he's going to grow up to be a total mummy's boy because, you know, his mum's always there. So I like this family, I like the idea of them being picture perfect and I think it works well with the other family I've created that live just across the street from them. And I like the story. So the story basically between these two families is Adam from this family and Thomas from the other family that I'll be talking about in a second. They went to school together, they were good friends and they went to college together. Now James, he was very successful in, in school and in college he was always very popular. He had great, good grades, yeah, but Thomas actually had better grades. He's very, very smart, but he wasn't as uh, social. But he did help James uh, with his studying and stuff like that a lot. So they went to college together, but they were both dating people, which is their respective wives now. But Thomas's wife, Julie, fell pregnant when they were in college, so that forced them to even get their lives together ready for a family. So they both dropped out of college, which has now left them in a bit of a, a difficult situation where you know, neither of them have got the kind of dream jobs that they were going to be working hard to get, which means financially they're struggling a little bit. And they also feel like socially, because they didn't get to have the same experience as all their friends, they feel like they're a little bit left out in life, but also they try really hard to not let anyone see that they are struggling or that their lives aren't as good as others. They very much compare themselves to others. And that's actually why the Golf family, which is Thomas's family, moved into this house across the road from the James family because they heard how wonderful their lives were and they were like, no, we need to get a house in this development and move in here. So they saved up as much as they could and they managed to get a mortgage to move into this lovely house in this great neighborhood. So now they're really struggling financially to afford the mortgage and to keep up the perception of this great lifestyle which means that they're working a lot they don't have much money to spend they don't have any time for just keeping the house good and really don't have any time to spend with their kids which is a shame especially as you know they had brian their older son when they were really young they were only in their first year of college so from a very young age you know brian's been 
not ignored, it's just that he hasn't had the same attention that, you know, you would hope a child would have. But yes, this is Brian. He wants to be a comedian when he's older. He's a goofball and he's self-assured. You know, he has grown up looking after himself a lot, so he's had to develop this kind of backbone and this independence, really. But he's a very creative soul. And he gets that from his mum, Julie. Julie is in the culinary career. She is romantic, family oriented and creative. And when she was in college, she was on track to get her degree in the arts. And she wanted to be a very successful painter. She's very talented at it. But when she had to drop out of college because she was pregnant with Brian, it meant that she had to give up on her dreams a little bit. And I think it's got to the point now where she's almost forgotten that that's her dream. She just hasn't had the time to think about it, which is really sad. So maybe she'll find this time to pick it up again. Who knows? Because it is her passion and she just, she's been working so hard to provide for her family that I think it's time that she has a little bit something for her, you know? And then the very youngest in the family is Jack. He has a motor aspiration and he's very active. He wants to be an astronaut when he grows up. So hopefully he does, does well. I hope he has a good upbringing. And I never spoke about the father. The father, Thomas, he is in the medical field. He wanted to become a very successful doctor. That's what he went to college and was going to be going to uni for. But when he dropped out, it meant he didn't have the qualifications to get the kind of job he wanted. So he's been working as an intern for several years now, trying to build up some experience to hopefully get promotion in the future because, you know, he feels the pressure to make some money for his family because they are struggling and Brian's going to be wanting to go to college soon because he's a, he's a teenager. So there's a lot of pressures for this family. I feel really bad for them because they've got so caught up in having this lifestyle that they can't afford. You know, they worry too much about what others think and it means that they're all really sad. Like, it's just a shame to think about. But I also think it would be a really fun family to play with. You know, could you turn their life around? Could you get Thomas that promotion and he starts climbing the ladder there and bringing in money and they become more comfortable? Could Julie then quit her job and, you know, follow her dreams of being a painter? Like, maybe Brian could go off to university if you have the, the university expansion pack, obviously. If not, then fair enough. But, you know, like, could you turn their lives around or would you want to play with them continuing to struggle? Maybe they sell this house and move into a slightly cheaper house elsewhere in a less glamorous neighbourhood. Who knows? I feel like the opportunities are endless and it would be a really fun family to play with. I do really like them. You'll see them in a second. Um, but I also really had fun with their garden. I put a little bit of clutter here and there. You see a lot of laundry and stuff because I feel like nobody has time to look after the house. They barely have time to look after themselves. They certainly don't have time to tidy the house. And the garden is really fun. I did, the front and back garden are quite messy, they're quite overgrown. But I did, the front garden was a little bit neater because I feel like any time that they have, they want to try and make it look like they, you know, fit into this neighbourhood and they, they have this, like, good life. So they're trying their hardest to keep the front garden looking nice to keep this sort of image up. Especially with their neighbours who live right across the road, they want to look good for them. But the back garden is just a mess. It's so overgrown. I didn't know if I was going a bit too overboard, but I also think it's just... I've never done a messy garden. I'm really guilty of always doing a perfect garden. So it was quite fun to mess around with it and do like a little bit more of a messy garden. And I think it does fit well with the idea of them um, just struggling. I feel bad. I do really feel bad for them. I want them to have a good life. But then that would also be fun to like do the garden up gradually as they make some money. Yeah. I love the idea of it. I think it's really open to having lots of opportunities playing with them. You can see them in just a second in these screenshots here. And I will leave you here. I really hope you enjoyed this one. I hope that you like these families. I really like them. I think they'd be fun to play with, especially with the like, the kind of uh, tensions with the golf family, this family in this house, trying to keep up with the other family. I think it'd be a really fun story to play with. Hopefully, I will see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.